Hello, this is ZMaster587, developer of Advanced Rocketry. Um, today I'm going to show you what the mod has as of its first alpha release. Um, not much has changed since the previous video, but a couple of really important things were added, such as actual, have, actually having recipes, NEI support, and a hello projector, which is used in-game to project the multi-block structures which you might want to build. It supports all the multi-block structures in advanced rocketry. And there was one other machine added too that would help out early game, otherwise it would be impossible to build some of these things. So we'll take a look at the hollow projector and I'll show you how to use you know, the hollow projector in a lot of these things. Uh, it's probably the first thing to start out with is the hollow projector if you plan on at least building the multi-block machines anytime soon. It's not an expensive recipe, optical sensors, redstone, iron plate. I'll show you to make the iron plate before making the rolling machine later on. Optical sensor is pretty cheap, requires gold plate. Same process that makes the iron plate also makes the gold plate, which I'll also show you later on. Um, there's a nice tool tip on here. Shift right click opens the machine selection interface. Shift scroll moves cross section. I'll show you what I mean in a second. And if I shift right click, brings up a display of all the machines currently in advanced rocketry that require more than one block. You can scroll down the list by clicking and dragging and dragging your mouse. Um, I'll show you. The first thing you probably want to build would be the electric arc furnace because you need steel for things. So we'll start with that. I'll click on that and I'll hit escape to close the interface. You'll see now at the bottom of Hollow Projector it says Electric Arc Furnace. Those green letters tell you what you currently have selected. If I right click now without shifting, it'll project part of the machine in front of me, and if I hover over it, it'll tell me exactly what the block is. Um, if I hold down shift and scroll while the Hollow Projector is selected, if I scroll down, it shows it's moving the cross section. Uh, one thing you'll notice is that sometimes you can put different things in different places. For example, here you can have the input hatch, the output hatch, or a heat proof brick. Any of those are valid. If I continue scrolling up, it'll you know move the cross section up a bit more. Once you move it up all the way, this is the top. If I scroll down again, it shows the entire machine at once which is really useful if you want to, say, figure out where you're placing it. Um, if I hold right-click, I can move it around as I'm walking. If I can turn here, see, it keeps facing the direction I'm looking. Um, it always appears a couple of blocks in front of you, so I had someone on the test server the other day try and, uh, you know, click on a block and was wondering why it wasn't working, but it's, it's always a constant distance in front of the player at least as of the alpha build. Um, if I scroll down, it moves the cross section back down. And the cool thing is, if I'm in creative mode, like I am now, I can use the pick block button, and it actually gives me you know, an actual version of the block. These are all holograms. They're not really the right block you want to use. It's just there to you know, look semi-transparent. So I can build the machine, which I'll show you. Real quick, I'll build the uh, structure. Um, it's not too complex, it's just a uh, relatively large glass furnace. The heat proof pricks are relatively cheap. Okay, see, I'm going to move the cross section up so I can see what I'm doing. Um, they do require you with the nether, however, for uh, getting stuff for these potions. I'm sure you all know the uh, recipe for that, and if you don't, you, know, you should probably have any eye installed and look it up. So I'm going to wait for input hatch to come up. I'm going to wait for output hatch, because I'm honestly a bit lazy. Uh, the machine controller block. Uh, middle clicking on this one, as of the alpha build, does not currently work. It gives you a machine controller block, which does absolutely nothing. It's currently just a dummy used in rendering here. So what I really want is the electric arc furnace, which is not terribly expensive. So I can put this down. That's the next cross section. Uh, most of it's heat proof brick. You know, you probably want your 
furnaces to be heat proof. And I know that uh, this isn't exactly the way that arc furnaces in real life are built, because, well, originally this was going to be a standard, you know, furnace powered by some sort of you know, reaction with oxygen and some other kind of chemical, I wasn't entirely sure. Eventually I went and switched to the arc furnace, because, yeah, I was doing a bit of research and found that a lot of the stuff that I was planning on making with the mod was actually really used with an arc furnace. So I kind of wanted to follow that. This may change in the future to reflect what actual arc furnaces look like, but as of right now, it's heat mostly heat-proof brick. Uh, now to form the structure, I should be able to right-click on the machine block here. Right-click once. That forms a structure of any of the blocks in here. Right-click again should open the interface. Okay, this is cool. We've got the interface open. Um, these RF storage blocks need power. As of right now, um, you do require some external means of generating power to use the mod in survival. Um, in creative, you can get around the lack of power by, of course, spawning stuff in. Uh, but you will need something that handles RF as support for other mods power systems are not currently implemented. It will be in the near future, perhaps next version of beta or next version of alpha or beta, but we will have support for support for other power systems such as IC2. Um, and honestly whatever else people really want. I'm hoping to get Rotorycraft support for this, however, I'm going to have to talk to the developer of that, because he likes to have control over his power system, I don't want to upset him, as that would just be mean. Alright, so you can see the arc furnace now has power. Uh, let's see, what do we make an arc furnace? We usually want to make something like steel. Alright, shape crafting steel nuggets, of course, however, arc furnace. Iron ingot and block of coal results in steel. 300 seconds cooking time at 1 RF a tick. It's not terrible. I mean, it's a, it's a bit of a long process, but it's not... You can probably pretty easily automate the system. So you can, say, dump a couple of stacks of iron in there and a couple of stacks of coal blocks and just pump, keep pumping the machine. Let's see if I put this in here. If I activate the machine, like I said in the previous video, the way these machines work is when they're currently turned off, as indicated by this toggle switch here, they won't do anything. However, if you've got the correct inputs and the right amount of power, hitting the toggle switch will activate the machine. Um, because it's a relatively slow process, the progress bar is not even to fill up yet, but you can see the front of the machine has changed its texture to indicate that it's smelting stuff. You can see at the very bottom here, it's starting to fill up. Um, if you toggle the machine off while it is running, it'll continue whatever it was doing, but once it's done, it'll stop processing materials. The reason that's there is, honestly, I got sick and tired of, you know, at least with Greg Tech, I keep running out of power on my machines, and I'm honestly too lazy to use the rubber mallet all the time. So, I... I mean, most machines in real life that I've seen have a toggle switch of some kind, so why not? Alright, so yeah, you'll be making steel and stuff in the furnace, arc furnace here. More recipes will probably come later. Silicon is another thing you'll need to make in there, which is just sand. Uh, the silicon is required later on to make the chips and stuff, which I will also show you. Um, plates. You need plates to make some of your early game stuff, so I'll show you how to do that real quick. I was originally planning on having, you know, a vanilla piston for this, but I... It was just painful to get working, so I'm like, eh, I'll just make my own block for it. It makes it a bit easier for me. Um, it also makes a bit more sense. The idea here is you're covering your piston in iron to make it a bit more resilient. Uh, how this works is you need a block of obsidian. The obsidian has to be one block below the small plate presser. The small plate presser always faces down, regardless of how you orient it. And then you take a block of whatever material you want to 
press in the plates. Um, bear in mind, I'll probably be adding NEI recipes for this next alpha build. Um, in order to work this, you need a redstone signal. And once I pull this lever, it'll crush the block into an iron plate. Uh, this does not work with all plates. However, as of now, it works with steel plates. You can also leave the lever down, which is also really nice. Uh, it should also work with gold plates. Which I will. There we go. See, so got one of each type of plate. So if you're struggling and trying to figure out how to make your first machines, that's how you're going to have to do it. Um, re only reason that's really needed is because of these output hatches and the power hatches require machine structure. Machine structure requires plates. So that's an easy way to make plates. It's a lot more expensive, by about nine times than using a rolling machine, but it'll get the job done in the short term. Um, rolling machine. You can also get that from the hollow projector, which is here. I'll click that. Right click again, you can show the whole machine, you can scroll up and down, and you can build it that way. I've already got one built over here. Eventually, this will require water to be pumped into it, but as of right now, I haven't gotten around to actually adding the uh, back end for it. Um, Holy machine crushes down ingots, titanium, copper, whatever ingot, into plate. It's a one-to-one -one ratio, so one ingot makes one plate, which is a much better deal than the nine ingots to one plate that you'll get with a small plate press. Um, See, so yeah, those are required to make plates. Rolling machine, or not the rolling machine, the lathe over here um, is used to make rods, which are also used in construction of various machines. Which I'll get to later. Um, again, the iron rod can be made without the lathe, otherwise it would be impossible to make the iron rod in the first place. So three iron ingots. Again, all the recipes in here you can look up in any eye. I forgot I moved build craft earlier by mistake and my engine disappeared. Yeah. Oh. What happened there was, it was registering zero power because I derped up earlier while working with this and forgot to reset it. Anyway, it works now. Uh, copper ingot, same process, you know, makes copper rods. Also shows up in the projector. As of now, it does not really matter what direction the motor faces. So, yeah, don't be too concerned about orienting the motor perfectly, because it really doesn't matter at this point in time. Over here we've got the crystallizer, which is going to be required to make these chips, which are required for things like the atmospheric density scanner, the silicon wafers in general, uh, also can be found in the hollow projector under crystallizer. Uh, I can input stuff here. If I remember correctly, acquired a silicon nugget as well as a silicon ingot. The logic behind this one is yeah, you need a seed for your silicon volume. I'm not sure if uh, if you look in the chip making, they do do that. It's probably not a silicon nugget, but you know, it's Minecraft. It's close enough. Yeah, I mean, it fits with everything else, so. Again, this one's also goofed up for the same reason the lathe was. I have not replaced any of these machines since I made two major edits. So, uh, the machines I'm about to show you might be a bit weird, but they should not do this in the alpha version. This is only because I was messing around with the code and got too lazy to... Alright, it should be running. Maybe I got the rest of it. All right, well, that's not working as expected. 
Maybe the output's full. You know. I'll just replace these real quick. Again, this stuff shouldn't happen because, like I said, I was messing around. Alright, well, it does not appear to be currently working. I will have this fixed for the alpha release, but it does put out silicon volumes. Or it will in about 20 minutes. <laughs> Uh, silicon volume then goes into the cutting machine, which is again broken because I've been making edits. I of course, you know, mixed plates and stuff. Basic circuits come from putting the basic circuit plate into the cutting machine. And all these things show up in NEI. And the name of the top should correspond to the name of the hollow projector. So, I'll press on. Um, precision assembling machine, same deal. You put stuff in here according to the recipes. You know, can require three items, maybe a few more. Tells you anything in any eye. So, that's how you make stuff. That's the important part of making stuff. Rutile should spawn in the world. That is where you get your titanium. Yeah, tin ore, etc., etc. Dilithium currently is not used except for one item. We use a dilithium crystal to make the mass detector. Dilithium spawns on the moon. Eventually, is going to be used to fuel warp cores, and we'll we'll have uh, things like large spacecraft that you can move around. Uh, in order to get to other solar systems, you will need a warp core. Um, here's a planet analyzer. This is how... Let's see, where is it? Planet analyzer? No, it's in here somewhere. There it is. Um, this is how you'll control what planets you go to by means of a planet ID chip. The planet ID chip you will plug into your rocket, which I'll show you in a few minutes, and it will determine your destination. Uh, you can do research with these chips as well, as any research you do in the Planet Analyzer is stored into these chips in the input hatches here. Um, if I select this Planet Selector here, which is part of the multi-block structure from the Planet Analyzer, here, Planet Selector, um, Right click on this, it'll give you a map of the solar system. Currently, there is only one solar system. The ability to have more are planned, however, you really can't get there without the warp cores yet. And I really don't want to break stuff for people who have a, you know, any kind of server set up and implant the warp cores and people are getting stranded. I really don't want that, so that is why there's only one solar system right now. I can click on a planet. It's highlighted by a nice green rotatey thing. <laughs> if I click on it again, it'll zoom in so I can see any moons that the planet might have. Uh, Earth has Luna. If I want to select it so I can do research on it, I would click the select button at the top left, which will close the GUI. And the planet analyzer now says planet 2. Internally, the moon is identified as ID2 and is prepended with a planet in the interface to make it less weird than seeing the number 2 randomly. Eventually, it's going to show the actual name of the planet. However, naming system needs to be implemented first, which it is not right now. It's just rudimentary at the moment. Uh, you can collect data through putting satellites in the orbit. The distance... The distance data here can be collected with a telescope, which you've probably seen behind me. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, data is stored on data units. Data units can be used with these I.O. slots here, which is really just a front end for these data blocks here. What's in here you can actually see in the interface over here. I personally find because of a lack of GUI space here, um, I couldn't put a the whole player interface. So I personally find it's easier to come back here and then dump the data unit in, and then run around the front. 
You don't have to do it that way. You can put it in the hot bar and put it in. But I personally find it easier. Uh, what you can do here is if you want to take the data off the chip, you have to click store to buffer. You'll notice it's filled up with atmosphere density data. If you try and put the wrong data in the wrong slot, for example, mass data in a slot looking for distance data, to find out what type of data it has by hovering over it, it does not work. So you have to make sure the data matches what you're putting it into. All right, and I have Planet 2 selected here. And I need a chip that has Planet 2 in one of these. In this case, Luna, right here. Um, by clicking this button, I can toggle research. If the planet is not in the in if the chip for the planet is not in the input slot, it'll do research and consume data. However, you won't get any benefits. It'll just be lost because it has nothing to store it to. Um, how you get the planet ID chips? First, you have to craft a planet ID chip, unprogrammed. And then you put it into this top slot here on the Planet Analyzer. Whatever planet you have selected in the Planet Interface will be programmed into this chip when I click the Process Discovery button. So I'll click the Process Discovery button now, and you will see that it has begun to do things. Um, you notice that's consuming power at an alarming rate. My engine's missing again. So I really ought to put that down. Um, any RF device works with the RF storage box. You can pipe stuff into it, but I find it easier to use a creative engine, as I've been placing and breaking these hundreds and hundreds of times. Okay, you can now see that the chip has been processed. So I can now put it down into here. Because I already have one over here, there's not really any point. Another thing is these chips, if you don't have a chip, corresponding to a planet and you've not researched, or if you've not researched it, the planets will show up as black question marks. Um, you will be able to see them as you research them. For example, over here is Sol 10. I've done a bit of research on it, enough so that I can see it. These bars at the top indicate atmospheric pressure, uh, mass, and relative distance units. Um, relative to Earth, where one is Earth from the Sun. This one's a bit closer than Earth, and you can see that says 0 to 0.7. Um, there's a bit of error because we don't have a lot of data on it. We have some, enough to give us a general idea, but not quite enough to tell us exactly what it is. Um, Sol 10, right? Alright. So you see if I re find and remove Sol 10 from the input hatch, your Sol 10, it now becomes a question mark again. That's because you removed the data chip from the system. And it, it basically can't access it. That, of course, is an in-universe explanation, but... So you've got that. You've got Earth. You've got some other planets here. It indicates the number of moons. If I click on this, you'll see there are two moons. I've done research on Sol 6. Uh, there is more than one texture. A texture that looks like this indicates it's Earth-like. Yeah, you'll have a decent spread of biomes between hot, cold, you know, it won't be a completely barren place. You'll probably see trees and life there. Um, over here is an ice planet. You can see that, you know, it's white and covered in snow and ice. It is surrounded by what appears to be a habitable planet, high mass, a decent amount of pressure. We don't know because, again, a bit of error. And with the moons, these relative distance units correspond to the distance between the planet, or the moon and the planet. It's a relatively large moon. So, if you want to go back up, you click the up button. This brings you back to the solar system screen, or you can select whatever planets you want. Alright, so we're going to take a quick trip to the moon. I'll show you how to build a rocket in advanced rocketry. It's not a usually difficult process. So here's a couple of samples of completed pads here. So I'm going to construct a new one so you can see what I'm talking about. Um, these pads will define the area where you can build your rocket. If you try and build your rocket off the edge of the pad, 
it'll not, it won't form into a rocket properly. Depending on what you've done, it may leave part of it behind or, you know, other weird things. But you don't want that. Uh, these pads do have a maximum limit currently. I will, I will implement a config for it. Have not done that yet. I may or may not do it before the first release, so you can check the config file. Um, there are other things in the config file as well, so it's the ability to turn on and off ores, um, control how frequently ores spawn, and how big their cluster size is. Uh, so I made a small pad here. Okay, make sure you have this in the ground. Something that's very important is you need to make sure that your structure tower is touching the side of the launch pad has to be touching the side. If you build it like this, it will not work. See, it has to be touching the side. It doesn't have to be any particular side. Like, if I want to, I can build over here. This is perfectly valid structure. Uh, you can, if you really want to have multiple structure towers per launch pad, um, the rocket builder will take, will use the highest structure tower as the highest, or as the maximum size for the rocket. Um, the larger that you build your pad, and the larger you build your structure tower, the more time it will take to scan your rocket. There is a config, there is a multiplier in the config for how long it takes to build the rocket. Let's see if I can find the rocket builder in here. I'll need the guidance computer. We've got a couple of other things. Liquid fueled engines, right now the only engine you can build. Seats, seats are, you know, required for you to sit on. You're not going to go anywhere if you can't sit down. <laughs> so liquid fuel and liquid fuel tanks. Um, so yeah, rock these liquid fuel engines provide thrust. However, you also need enough liquid fuel to be able to launch. So I'm going to put down a couple of fuel tanks here. I'm not going to build a pretty rocket, just one that works to give you the general idea. Um, I'm going to put the seat here. And I'm, yeah, I gotta put, put some iron and glass on it to give it like a little bit of a cockpit. Uh, you're, you're not limited to these materials. Any material that you can place should be placeable on the rocket. Uh, you can e actually even put tile and these on here if you want to, such as chests and uh, things of that nature. Um, in order to go somewhere, I do need the guidance computer. The guidance computer is where you put the chip, and that tells the rocket where it's going. So I'm going to put the guidance computer in the front here, and as a demonstration, I'm going to take the Billcraft refinery, put it on the side over here, and I'm going to take a chest from Minecraft, and put it over here. All right, so I'm going to put a few items in the chest real quick. Basic circuit boards, um, pad controller. This needs to be placed down. This is what actually builds the rocket. This does require power, so I need to grab another engine. So I'm going to put engines on either side here. Because, yeah, I'll, I'll use the wrench again. So I'll increase the limit, so power decently. If you find anything that seems horribly unbalanced, you know, power-wise, item usage-wise, whatever, please make sure to let me know if you can. I mean, if if it's out of you know, if it's something, if you know, if it's something small or whatever, and you know, depending on how bad it is, I may or may not fix it. Chances are, I will if it's really an issue. But if you're just if people are going to complain about little tiny things, you know, I'm not going to do that. All right, so we've got a rocket here. We can scan our rocket which takes a couple of seconds. This basically analyzes the rocket and tells you, okay, is this a valid structure or not? Will this make it in the orbit, etc., etc.? Gives you fuel usage, gives you acceleration, weight and thrust. Acceleration is, you know, of course, weight is a force, unlike mass, but weight is mass times acceleration. So you have a thrust here, too. And if your thrust is higher than your weight, you should have a positive acceleration, which will allow you to get up into space. Alright, so I scanned it. This doesn't actually build the rocket. So what I want to do now is I want to actually build it. 
you'll notice that the bars here are red this time. Uh, the, the rocket did slightly change color. I'm not sure if you saw that or not. That is normal. All right, so another thing I can do here is if I shift click on it, it'll open up an interface giving me information about the rocket. Um, I've got a chest that I can interact with, a guidance computer I can interact with, and the refinery. Uh, the refinery doesn't really work, but most other things with inventory should. Like guidance computer, I'm going to put the planet ID chip in here, Luna, so I can go to the moon. Oh, if you want to disassemble your rocket for any reason, you can click the disassemble button. If I'll click now to demonstrate, you'll see that this still is in the guidance computer like I put it in there a second ago. So inventories will persist. Alright, so I'll scan my rocket now. As of right now, there is no fuel system in advanced rocketry, so, you know, why not make bottle rockets? We're going to use water for now, just to make it a bit easier. Uh, fuel will be implemented later on. It is not now. But uh, perhaps by beta we should have a fuel system. And I can never remember where water is, so I'm just going to search it. Um, you can also right-click on the rocket with a bucket of water to fuel it. You know, so bring a bucket of water in case so you don't strain yourself or something and like the moon. You're not going to find water there. Okay, so, can see, I have a fueling station around here somewhere. Fueling station is how you actually fuel up your rocket. It's not anything incredibly fancy right now. So place that down. Put some water into it. Oops. So we can fuel our rocket. Good, that's full. This also requires power. It does not require a ton of power. It does require a little bit. So I'm going to do that. Okay. Now you can see it's not doing anything right now. Well, it's not linked. It needs to be linked to be able to work. So if you want to link it, make sure you grab the linker which I need to add localization to. I will do that once I'm done with this video. Okay, so it says chords unset. In order to link something, you shift right click one thing, and you should get a message with your location there. And then you can shift right click, or you can right click on the rocket with it. And if it worked, it should say link successfully. There is a distance limit, so make sure not to go too far. All right. It's now full of fuel, because I have it linked. It didn't use that much water. Um, because right now the water, you know, the water required to do it ridiculously low. Okay, so now that our rocket is fueled, we can hop into it. I personally like to use the third person. Um, in order to take off, now that you've got your fuel and your destination, hit, you want to hit your space bar. And you'll see I've started to move. You see the engines are firing down there. And I've begun to take off. Um, it's a pretty heavy rocket for the number of engines I have on here, so takeoff is a wee bit slow. Um, distance to orbit is configurable, so if you wanted to, say, you know, reach orbit by the time you hit 200 blocks up, you can do that. Uh, you can see a transition to a planet here. You can actually see the planet underneath you on your way up. Um, it's nighttime. You can't see it right now, but Earth has an atmosphere. I'll turn it to daytime really quick so you can see that. You can see that it's mostly water, but um, out there on the edges you should be able to see a bit of a blue haze. That is the Earth's atmosphere. As I ascend, more and more of it is below me, so the haze gets a little bit thicker. The bar on the right-hand side tells me my velocity, the amount of fuel I have, and my altitude. Uh, once the altitude indicator hits the top, I will have reached orbit and be begin to descend on whatever planet I'm destined to go to, in this case, the moon. Um, there will be a short loading screen, especially if this is the first time you're generating that planet. So if you have a solar computer, it may take a bit longer. You can see that 
because you can't see the atmosphere anymore, and we're above a gray surface. Uh, we're also descending at a relatively alarming rate. Uh, you'll want to hit the W key to reverse thrust. You'll see the engines fire when I hit the W key, and the fuel drop. If I run out of fuel, I will no longer be able to thrust, and I will get stuck if I don't have any more fuel with me. So you might want to make sure to bring a water bucket or something, otherwise you'll get stuck. Alright, I've run out of fuel, and I've landed on the surface of the moon. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that it's a bit brighter. You see the sun in the sky, and gravity's a bit lower. Um, there are some planets, the more massive ones especially, have higher gravity. And some, if you're not really not careful, you may not be able to jump a full block. So make sure you don't go to like the really massive planets if you plan on jumping at blocks. Stairs will still work, so bring stairs with you or some means to craft stairs. Uh, you shouldn't run into too many of those. So now I'm on the moon. There's not really much here currently. Um, it's alpha. I do not have an oxygen system. You'll see I'm in survival and not taking any damage because I don't keep track of that yet. Eventually you are going to need a spacesuit or some environment to stay in while you're on the moon. Um, the moon is the only place right now where you can get dilithium crystals, which are required to build the mass scanner, which I showed you earlier. Mass scanner. Alright, so I'm going to go back to my ship, I'm going to fuel it up again, a bucket of water. This time I'm just going to shift right click it with a bucket of water because you really don't need the fueling station as of now, but it is handy if you're planning on launching a lot of rockets from the same location. So I'll right click the water, and I'll right click on the rocket again, and I'll hit space to take off. Yeah, you've you've already seen this, so I'm just going to cut to the chase. Or, I'm going to get out of it as, as it's flying up. <laughs> anyway, uh, there are a couple of admin commands in advanced rocketry that may, might make managing things easier. For example, go to command. You type go to for advanced rocketry space. Go to space name of dimension. Hit enter, and it will take you to the same spot in the other dimension, which in this case is right next to the landing pad. I'm back on Earth. I can go to, I have, sorry about the message, I have chisel in here because I was wanted to make sure that chisel and other things worked properly with the rockets. So that's how you build the rockets. And other planets have other features. Um, some have thicker atmospheres. Um, one of the planets out there has a uh, new biome where you can find these lightwood trees. I won't tell you which one. It is somewhat randomized. So you'll have to explore and find it on your own. Alright, next thing you really need to know about advanced rocketry is the satellite system. In order to get more information about these other planets, you need to be able to get data. To be able to get data, you need to build satellites or an optical telescope. Optical telescope will only create distance data, and will only work at night when it is clear and it's not raining. Right now it's day, so it's closed. There's no point in running. I'll set it to night. I'll fix that. There are a couple of bugs. It is an alpha, and you know, the ones I come across in this video I will fix before the alpha release. This is supposed to open and start generating data. It's generating data, it's just not opening. That's just a render bug. So I will, I will have that one fixed as well. Alright, so I'm going to show you how to build satellites now. Again, as of the alpha release, there are only three satellites, and all three of those are used for sole purpose of collecting data. You get information out of planets. There will be more data than this eventually, but as of right now, 
your infrastructure for the rest of it is not quite there. I'm planning on have planning on having planets where you can harvest gas, especially from gas giants, and um, different atmospheres, things like that. All right, so I'm going to get my basic solar panels. And some data units. The data units are required to actually be able to collect data with your satellites. The satellite. Where is it? I know it's in here somewhere. Crystallizer. I have satellite terminal. Satellite builder. Here we go. A satellite builder. Place that down. And this requires power. You place the redstone flux plug underneath it to power it. My engines are all disappeared over here too. So I'm going to put this next to it. Put down a lever. And it should start filling this up. Uh, you can also break, you can break the multi-block machines and the things inside of it will retain power. Like for example, if I were to break the lathe over here, Whatever power is in here will be, if there was power in here, it's using it a bit faster than this small engine is generating, but whatever power is in there will remain in there. Okay, this is another multi-block structure. That's why it took two clicks. Um, first one actually assembles the structure. Second one opens the interface. All right. So basic solar panels, your satellite needs energy. So... Best thing to do is just put three solar panels in here. Also need a place to store data. If you don't put any data storage devices in your satellite, it will be absolutely useless and you should probably destroy it. <laughs> because you can't collect data if it's got nowhere to store it. Right, these bottom three slots are used for data. These middle three slots are used for energy and energy storage. Right now, only works basic solar panels. This top slot up here is the sensor you wish to put into your satellite. So in this case, I'm making an optical sensor. Optical sensor is used to determine distances. So you'll get distance data from the satellite. Um, you need a satellite ID chip, because you have to have some way of accessing it. You put it in the left slot here. There is a copy button here, right the secondary chip. So let's say you had satellite one and wanted to create another chip for it. You would put one chip here. This chip would be the one that's programmed. You'd put another chip here, which is the one that you want to program. All right, so now I'm going to build the satellite real quick by clicking the build button. Uh, you'll notice that this now has an identification number, ID1, planet unknown, it tells you the type satellite. Um, eventually satellites will be required to have some kind of power storage device online. As of right now, that's not a thing. So if you see big red letters that say no power storage, don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, if I do add the power storage system, I will set it so any satellites currently in orbit without power storage will get maximum power storage because it wouldn't be fair you know, if you had, you had to destroy all those satellites just because the mod updated. So I am going to make sure to keep things as compatible as possible. All right. So in order to use this, you need the satellite terminal, which requires a tiny bit of power. This one is not a multi-block structure. It might be made into one in the future for support. So this drains one RF a tick while it's trying to communicate with satellite. <coughs> Pardon me. Satellite ID chip goes up here. It says no link. Well, that's to be expected. We haven't launched a satellite yet. This is the satellite we actually have to launch. So I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. So I'm going to assemble another small rocket here. Let's see if I put that there. And again, it's going to be bare bones because I don't want to spend too much time. It doesn't have to be any particular configuration as long as you have enough fuel and enough you know, rockets to get up there. All right, instead of putting the seat on there, if you want to log for a rocket, you need a satellite, or a satellite in orbit, I'm sorry. You need a satellite bay. It can be placed anywhere on the rocket. Once it's placed, you can put your satellite inside of it, and you can then assemble your rocket. 
which takes a few seconds each time. Okay, we're clear for liftoff. Have a lot more thrust than the last one and less weight, so acceleration is higher. We'll have a lot of we have a lot of fuel by the time it reaches orbit, but for satellites that's not really a huge issue. I'm going to assemble it real quick. I'm going to link the fueling station to it. Okay, it should have fuel now. Um, again, the satellite bay you can also access while the rocket is built by clicking on it. All right, this thing here is a monitoring station. This gives you information about a satellite, you know, on its way into orbit. So if I shift click this and click this, it'll say linked successfully. If it is linked successfully, and now if I open monitoring station, I see actual information: amount of fuel, velocity, and altitude again. Right now, velocity is zero, it's not going anywhere, and altitude is ground level. Um, because I can't sit in this rocket and hit space to launch it, I need to, I do need to launch it from the monitoring station. There's a handy launch button here, which you can click, and you'll see it begins its ascent into orbit. And I can look in here, and it gives me up to the second information about it. You can see its velocity is increasing, its fuel is starting to drain, and its altitude is climbing. It looks like it's going straight towards the moon. You can kind of see it there. That white thing, and it's gone out of sight. Let's keep an eye on it at the monitoring station. Its altitude is about to reach orbit. All right, it has reached orbit. The monitoring station disconnects itself from the rocket. It's successfully in orbit now. Now, if we go back to our satellite monitoring station here, you will see it no longer says no link. It says optical telescope and lists information about the satellite. It has zero power. That's to be expected. There's no power storage on it. It is generating power, though, so it can generate data. You will see that it says data storage 3K. That means it can have a maximum of 3,000 data stored at a time. All right. So we have our I.O. port like we saw in the Planet Analyzer. I can use an empty data unit or data unit containing the same type of information and attempt to store the data. The one thing to remember is this data listed here is what's on the satellite. The data on the satellite is not stored in the satellite terminal. So for whatever reason you lose connection to the satellite you know, or it gets destroyed, you will lose that data. To download the data, you'll have to click connect. See if I try to put the data on the chip by using the store to chip button, nothing happens. All right, so to get data, we need to click connect. Data has dropped to zero. However, the data is now stored in the satellite terminal. This will get lost if the satellite terminal is broken, but will not get lost if the satellite is destroyed. So I will now store that to the chip, and I've got distance data now. All right, so the, again, the chip is what stores it, so you can move it from terminal to terminal, like this. It keeps its data. The nice thing about these satellites is they do not tick. So, you know, if you have a ton of them in orbit, you should not see any performance impact on a server or client you're running. Okay. I did not cover what this big X here does. This big X will destroy the satellite you currently have in the slot. You will lose contact with it. The chip will be overwritten. Any other chip that is connected to the same satellite will lose signal because you self-destruct the satellite. All right, so I'll show you how to copy this real quick. I can put this in the builder, put this here. I'll grab a unprogrammed chip. Put it in the second slot, and I will click right the secondary chip. You'll see this will disappear, the machine will begin to run, and once it's done, it'll output another chip here, which will be an exact duplicate of the first one. The same thing can be done for planet ID chips. Oops, I accidentally dropped that one. So if you want to share a planet with your friends, okay, I'll take some of these. So I'll show you more data on it. 
Alright, so we'll put the plan ID chip in here. It's data, sol 10. I will take an unprogrammed plan ID chip, put it in the second slot, and then I'll click write the secondary chip. Nothing will happen because I forgot to put that into the mod. I will do that after the video and before I release the alpha. It should, it should work the same way as the satellite ID chip, and it will copy it. So, there are currently three types of satellites that correspond to three types of properties of the planet, which are shown up here. And this is really all you should need to know to play the Alpha Build Advanced Rocketry. And have fun, get exploring, possibly colonize. So, I'm going to sign off now. Good night. Have a good day, whatever. Yeah, and have fun.